steadfast love before. Okay. A bunch of these papers fell out of the chapter 1 and in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim king of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon under Jerusalem and besieged it and the Lord gave Jehoiakim king of Judah into his hands with part of the vessels of the house of God which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God and he brought the vessels into the treasures house of his God. The point, the point here is that God gave Judah into, the, into Nebuchadnezzar's hands. It wasn't a tragedy. It was foretold. Why? Because of Israel's disobedience. You had the, the ten tribes of Israel, and then you had the last two tribes, and they during the time they were carried, they were carried away because they weren't following God and his laws and his covenant. They had broken the covenant. They were unfaithful. Does that mean the whole, uh, whole state of Israel or the 12 tribes were, everybody was bad? I mean, the, the leadership was off. There was a lot of sin, but there, there were still good people, right? In the town that were really faithful to the Lord. But because of other people's actions, the whole, the whole um, of Israel eventually got carried away. And the king of Judah, at this point in time, got carried away into Babylon. All right? We got the picture? Mm -hmm. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, I'd hate to have that name, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel... Uh, and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge, understanding science, 
such as had the ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, and at the end that they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mashal, and Ariella. Unto them the prince of the eunuchs gave the name, for he gave Daniel the name Belshazzar, and to Hannah Shadrach, and to Mishael Meshach, and to Azariah Abednego. So you had Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank. Wherefore he requested of the prince of the Enochs that he might not defile himself. Even though he was carried away into a foreign land, he still remained throughout the book of Daniel. He is one of the most faithful people with godly character that I can... I mean, Paul, you know, he... he, he, uh, he tortured the church he persecuted the church he had a hand and then god had a mighty uh, encounter with him and he, he he went from saul to paul but this man grew up and he, he stayed faithful to the lord even in in the uh the climate that he was in what am i saying sometimes we don't like what's going on in the country but we need to continue to pray and be like daniel and continue to be faithful because there's, I bet you, in the long, in the time coming up, there's going to be other things that we're not. We we pray and we do our best, but we can't be tortured in our mind that, and and feel like God's not in control. You got to realize that God has a plan. He even laid it out to Daniel about the the end times. Um, I believe Daniel has 135 prophecies. There's, there, in the Bible, there's, I think, almost 800 prophecies concerning the, the time to come, and it's laid out in history. But in Daniel, there's 135 alone. God has a plan. He has a purpose. He said they would be carried away for 70 years into exile. But in, uh, towards the end of um, Daniel, uh, God, uh, Daniel read in Jeremiah 29 that, that the exile was going to end. He said, what's up, God? Well, what's up, God? God, was, he did what he said he would do, and they eventually went back to their lands. And that's a whole other story, like Nehemiah and a couple of, of the other prophets. But meanwhile, what was Daniel doing? He was in a place that he, he, that wasn't, he wasn't in a place like everything was going great. He was in a foreign land, uh, and the king was... Uh, uh, he, I mean, a conqueror, probably tortured people, probably did all sorts of things. But what did, did Daniel do? Did he freak out about it? No, he, he continued to stay faithful and, and pray. And, and Daniel got into, into the Word. And he stayed faithful to the Lord because it was about his walk. you got to remember that. you got to remember <laughs> that your life is your ministry. And, and, and Daniel's life spoke volumes in that foreign land. He was a witness and he ascended probably to one of the top offices. Did he try to do it? No, he just stayed faithful to the Lord and he took challenges as they came and God was with him. Amen? That's Amen. exactly what we need to do. Well, what do you mean? Well, I'm gonna keep on reading. And unto the prince of the, okay, he gave Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to get the, the uh, um, king of the, or the guy that was in charge of the eunuchs, that's how you say it, eunuchs. <laughs> um, Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with this portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Were oh, you speaking tongues or what? No. Oh, <laughs> no, no. All right. That's it. And, and the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who has appointed your meat and your drink, for why should he see your faces worse like that the children which are of your sort 
Then shall he make me, then basically I'm gonna, I might get my head cut off if you don't mm -hmm. start eating what the king wants you to eat. Then Daniel said to Melzar, Mel, Mel, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azar, Azariah, Prove my servants, I beseech thee ten days, let them give us pulse to eat, kind of like vegetables, uh, the diet, and water to drink. We're almost there. Then let your countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and, thou, and, and as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter, and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Then Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink, and they gave them pulse. God, Daniel was in a foreign land, Babylon. He did not compromise his beliefs. He stood yeah. for his belief. He stood for God. He stood, he, he stood for the covenant, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. At that time, he stood, and he, and he stood on his belief, and he stayed faithful to God. What do we need to do in these times? The last times and the last days, we need to stay faithful, standing and, and, and staying faithful to the Lord. Amen. 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 And as these four children, God gave them knowledge, skill, and all the learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and all dreams. Now at the end of days that the king had said he should bring them in. And the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before the king, Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them. And among them all was found none like Daniel Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them. He found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. These days, if you... Yeah, astrologers or magicians, oh, you get all freaked out. But no, you... You got the king of kings and the lord of lords on the inside of you. You don't have to fear what the devil may bring. You just continue to be faithful and stand for God and you'll rise to the top. Like cream, like remember the two frogs? That one one frog he gave up and the, he was they were both drowning. So the one frog he just kept pounding on his feet and he rose to the top. I don't know what that had to do with anything that I was just talking about, but I thought it was a good story. He, he, he don't quit. He don't give up. All right? That's my usual thing. Don't quit. Don't give up. But in, in this instance, you, uh, you, uh, you, you let your life be your ministry, and you just let your, you let your light shine. All right? You don't have to worry about the climate. We have to continue to pray for our country. Pray for the leaders and pray. And even if we every if every person that was in office is was somebody that we didn't like, we'd, God's plan would still come to pass because He is the one that's in control. That doesn't mean we don't go out and vote. Yeah, we vote for the the people that that line up to what we. But we don't worry about it because God is in control. God is, Amen. he's totally in control, just like he was back then. Uh, if, if, if Daniel was, didn't really know God is, and sometimes during the, that book, he, he questioned, well, what's going on? And then God showed him, but he stayed faithful. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stayed faithful. He even, you may, you know the story, Nebuchadnezzar, built a statue, and they said, you better bow down when you hear the music play. But again, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't bow down to that idol because uh, commandment number, number two, thou shall not have any idol mm -hmm. other than God, right? Yep. So they weren't going <laughs> to bend in their b beliefs. They weren't even going to break in their beliefs. They stood for what they believed then, and that was God. Amen. Today, we stand for what we believe in, and that's Jesus Christ, right. Him crucified. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we do that, and as the church continues to do that, 
it's okay to get involved in politics. This is a controversial message today, okay? <laughs> it is okay. It's great. But when it takes the place of your personal time with the Lord, <laughs> your energy, you're, you're, you're like a hamster in a cage going around and around and around, and you wonder why there's no results that you want to see. Because it all ever, Jesus said in, in John chapter 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So in, in Christ, you can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And as they were faithful to the Lord, Shadrach, Meshach, and Gabenico said to the king, uh, I know God's able to, I'm paraphrasing, God's able to deliver me even if he doesn't. I'm, I'm made to stand and I'm not budging. Amen. What happened? They went into the fire. They went into the fire. They went through the fire, but they were not burned. And everyone around them either were burned up or got very hot. Mm -hmm. Amen. But they didn't. Mm -hmm. Would you say they were in a situation that wasn't uh, congruent or agreeable to them? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right? Absolutely. Would you say uh, getting dragged? It's like you. You being in your home and then somebody comes and we're kind of fearful of that, right? Civil war, things happening, mm -hmm. like people coming in and just taking us out of our homes, being persecuted for what we believe in. Mm -hmm. I, I bet you Daniel and all them, they went through some stuff. Mm -hmm. There was even a time when Daniel, uh, the, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a vision and said, uh, he called us astrologers. And he said, hey, tell me what this vision means. Well, then the astrologer said, well, tell us what it is. And he said, no, I'm not going to tell you what it is. You're a magician and you're an astrologer and you've got to tell me what's going on here. Yeah, that's right, Anthony. you got to tell me what's going on right here. And, and, and uh, what happened, you're not going to tell me what the vision or the dream I had? Well... Kill all the astrologers, all the, all the uh, magicians. And then, and then, they were starting to kill him. And they got to Daniel and said, well, what's going on here? Wouldn't you be scared? Are they, mm -hmm. Well, tell me, well, what's the matter? Well, uh, the king had a, a vision, or a dream, and he says, if we don't interpret it, uh, we're going to die. Well, that's, but he didn't tell us the dream. It's impossible. And Daniel, I'm paraphrasing. Daniel said, no, 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 no. Give me some time. It's okay. Stay cool. Everything's going to be all right. He got, a he got alone with God. God spoke to him. And, and let me, I'm ready to talk to the king now. Let's go. And so he went and talked to the king. This is your dream. This is what, what it was. This is what it means. What happened? Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the king said, oh, wow, there's no God like Daniel's God. Here's some, here's some uh, uh, treasure, and I'm going to put you, I'm going to raise your, uh, you're going to get a promotion. He did, right? And he, he, he was higher than any of the other guys. Why? Because he, is, he was so often? He, because he was so awesome? No, because he had a connection. He had a connection with God. Amen. He rose to the top. It all goes down. It all goes down to our. It all goes down to our relationship with Christ. That's right. And Daniel. And Daniel. He had some other times. And the king had. He got full of himself, King Nebuchadnezzar, and he thought, "Wow, this is me." But he had to be humbled. That's another story in itself. But the point I'm trying to make is, don't get fearful. Don't get fearful about the things that are going on. Have faith. Put your trust in God and let your life be your ministry. And God will see that favor goes before you and, and that you, in whatever situation or circumstance you're in, you're going to rise to the top. Amen. Jesus said, Jesus said in uh, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, you are the light of the world. And what are we called to do? We are called to let our life sh light shine. Mm -hmm. Daniel was in an adverse situation. 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were not in the most optimal circumstance <laughs> at the time. Right? They were in a strange land. They, Like I said before, it'd be like you'd be in your home and you're getting ripped out of your home and taken to another country. But that would freak you out, right? That'd be so weird. That would be weird. Or somebody coming in and taking you out and say, you cannot preach the gospel. You cannot, you cannot, or you can't, you can't, have, you can't fellowship for church. You can't do this or that. It would be like that. But you know what? Daniel stayed true. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stayed true. And, and the king saw that they were ten times more proficient than whatever anybody else was in the in the in those people's homeland right god god moved and took them and ra raised them up and they became great leaders in the in babylon in in the worldly system but they didn't buckle to the system they they set the, they set their own trend and that's what we're called to do we're called to stand for christ and what does the bible say we're supposed to make disciples of other people, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, and lead people to Jesus, you know, and get out there and vote, be part, <clears throat> keep your eyes on the political, but political system. But uh, Daniel, he didn't worry about what was going on. He just stayed faithful to the Lord. And I think sometimes we get off course. We're supposed to be involved. We're supposed to be involved in community. We're supposed to cast our vote and be a part of a democratic society and do our part, right? Mm -hmm. But we can't let that take away from our connection with God. Because mm -hmm. he's the one that empowers us, fuels us, and gives us what we need and al allows, us to be, <laughs> allows us to be where he wants us to be. Because ultimately, God has a plan. He has a purpose, and it will come to pass. Right? That's right. Then the prophecies that Daniel that were it talked about 490 years after the fact, Jesus he prophesied the whole thing. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm paraphrasing it all. He he wrote it down. God laid it out to Daniel. Daniel wrote it down, and we have it today so we can study it and see it and learn from it. That ultimately God is in control. Amen. Sometimes A goes to B, C, D, E, F, G, and we're and but sometimes we see chaos and confusion. We wonder where God is. That's where we say we don't. We're not going to worry. We're going to put our trust. We're going to put our trust and our confidence in the Lord. Amen. Am I? Is it all connecting together? Mm -hmm. Yes. Am I? Am I? I may, am I making clear sense? Yes. Am I jumping around too much? No. <laughs> oh, good. Good. God gave Judah into Babylon's hands. The tribes of Israel, well, the tribes of it, I'm, I'm going to go on again. Tribes of Israel were uh, carried away by the Assyrians, the ten tribes of Israel, in 722 B.C. Inhabitants of Judea, Ju Judah to Babylon in 586 B.C. They were carried away because of disobedience. They were carried away because of disobedience. The point I want to make today is not to worry. God's in control. Your life is your ministry. God was, God was merciful and patient. He gave Israel time to repent, but they didn't. I want to tell you today, God is merciful and kind. We wonder why do these leaders or these people get away with so much? That's right. It's because God is merciful, he's kind, and he's patient. But eventually, every, everyone reaps the con consequences yes. of what they sow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Don't worry, the, 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 the leaders that are doing ungodly things, their time is coming. I pray they, they all repent. Yes. I pray, they, pray all of them. <clears throat> but God... God is in control. He will take care of business. What does the Bible say? Vengeance, yeah. vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Yeah. I will repay. Uh -huh. 
God was merciful and patient. He gave the children of Israel time to repent, but they didn't, and they suffered the consequences for their sin, and they were carried away to a foreign land. But eventually they came back, just like God said. Because why? Because, because they were his people. Have we gotten away from the Lord sometimes? Amen. And we're like, uh, I don't deserve nothing, anything. But God comes along as we comes along by, uh, alongside us say, hey, come on, let's get back on track. And uh, if we accept it, fine. If we don't, then we go along. The, we go along for a little bit longer. But he keeps. But eventually, so we suffer the consequences. But we don't want to get to that point. We want to be. We want to be a church that is humble, and uh, and when we m make a mistake, we repent and we move forward. Amen. That's right. Amen. God is merciful and He is kind. Israel did not repent; they got carried away. The church. In the last days, the love of many will grow cold. They will fall away. But that doesn't mean you have to, right? right. That means you stay faithful. You stay connected. What does that mean? That means you rise to the top. You're not looking for promotion. Everybody, oh, I didn't get the promotion. I didn't get this or that. Well, the Bible says promotion doesn't come from the east or the west. Pro promotion comes from me. And I set down one and I lift up another mm -hmm. well the election didn't work out the way we wanted to that's okay God puts down one he raises up another he's still in control and we still have 2024 Amen. right Amen. all right but it, if or in California it doesn't work out the way you want or the Senate the Congress all that stuff that's okay it's okay, God is still in control. You stay faithful. Let your let your life be your ministry. Uh, and and stay connected and see yourself rise to the top. Well, it's not happening in the timetable I want it to happen. And I, I, I'm just frustrated with this. I'm just going to do something else. Uh, I'm gonna, this is just crazy. Why do, you, I mean, why do I even try? Well, like, why did I just say that? Because the Bible says, don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you'll... You, you'll reap if you don't faint. So you got to stand your ground. The Bible says after you've done all the stand, continue to stand. Continue to stand. Continue to let your light shine when it's not even popular to let, let it shine. And you're actually maybe you're getting, you're getting a, a hard time for it. Doesn't it say in the Bible that Christians will be persecuted? I mean, we're not hardly persecuted. I mean, yeah, people... People are yeah. saying, yeah, like in other places. But sometimes we do suffer for uh, talking about Jesus. Oh, that Jesus stuff. We, we suffer. People talk about us, but that's okay. We keep moving forward, not getting discouraged, disgruntled, bitter, angry. We just let all the anger and wrath go, and we continue to stand for God. I'm sure Daniel went through all those emotions, but he held firm. I sure, I'm sure... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a little bit of doubt. I mean, I couldn't face a fiery furnace. Hey, it's all cool. It's all good. I'm just gonna hop right in. No, I'm sure they were. They were like, they, there was a battle going on. There's no temptation. The Bible says there's no temptation taking you, but such as the common man, common to man. But with each temptation, the Bible says He provides a way out. So I'm sure Daniel. And our Shadrach, Shadrach, <laughs> Meshach, and Abednego, I'm sure they struggled, but they, they held firm. Amen. Sometimes you're going to have a struggle, but I believe that you're going to hold firm and see the hand of the Lord move mightily in your life. I, I, I'm, I'm sure that you're going to see the hand of the Lord move mightily in your family. I'm serious, because it, sometimes it gets stressful. It gets very stressful, and you're wondering why, how. This looks like an ongoing thing that could last for a long time, and I don't see a way out. And you, you could get sad. You could get discouraged. And you wonder, and you wonder why. And you think everything was going to work out 
it's one way and it's totally opposite and you're at that crosswords where you could be totally discouraged downcast depressed but what are you going to do hang on. You, you're going to hang on you're going to hold firm mm -hmm. and you're going to be a witness why because your life is your ministry Amen. what you do matters Amen. and how you live for christ matters this is just a building this is this is a great fantastic building but it's a building and we have the privilege of meeting together but much more important it's what's going on in your life individually that really matters and if i if every one of you are walking in victory staying firm on god's word staying connected and growing in christ that's that's the number one number one goal that you all right you're that you're all like cream of the crop you rise to the top Okay, we're all, we're going to come into a landing because I don't want to put anybody to sleep. Because we're going to go. What the heck? <laughs> Silas always now he's sitting in that that chair now. He's just going to give me a hard time. <laughs> we're going to go to lunch here pretty soon. God was merciful and patient, giving them time to repent from idolatry and sin and not following God's ways. Sin filled the land. There were some good people, and because of the actions of others, good people suffered. But and they were carried away to Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They suffered. They suffered, but they stood for God and for His way. They didn't bow, and it, and they didn't bow, and they could have burned, but they didn't burn <coughs> either, because God came through. They had the attitude, even if he doesn't, I'm still serving God. They were, if everything doesn't go my way, and I don't see the victory I want to see, I'm still going to serve God. I'm going to still be faithful. I'm going to still stand for him. They were used for a fort, but the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, they were used for a force of good. After 70 years, they returned to Israel. The point is that we are we are in situations we don't like to be in or a political atmosphere that's not favorable but the point is that we are in situations we don't like to be in or a political atmosphere that's not favorable but through it all we need our witness for Jesus to shine through but through it all we need our witness for Jesus to shine through Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, they had an impact, and in, in a, they had an impact. Can you agree on that? Can you say amen. yay and amen? Yay. yay and amen. They had an impact, but it was their stance for God that always, that it, that made the difference, mm -hmm. that made the way, that delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm sure if they will unfaithful and they weren't living the way they should something other than what happened would have happened but that didn't happen they stood for god they were delivered from the fire daniel was delivered from the uh the enemy set up some stuff so daniel could get eaten in the lion's mm -hmm. den but did he did he get <laughs> eaten in the lion's den no. no even the king said are you still there daniel <laughs> and the and the king and Daniel said, yep, I'm still here. The God whom I serve, he sent an angel to close some lion's mouth. Everything's all right. That's good, Daniel. <laughs> and then Daniel came out and then king, get those other guys. Put them in there for what they tried to do to Daniel. And then they got eaten up, right? <laughs> so the one thing, what? So, so one thing that would destroy them or things in the world that might destroy other people are not going to destroy you because you have the King of Kings and Lord of Lords residing on the inside of you. And you got to remember that the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who's called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light but which in time past you are not a people but you are now the people of God 
which have not, which have, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You are God's people. And you might be in places that you don't want to be, but you continue to stay faithful. You still stand for Jesus. You let your light shine. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. It doesn't matter what's going on. We care, but it'll, it'll try, the enemy will try to fi fire his arrows or heat up the fire seven times hotter, but you stay faithful. You'll, when you walk through the water, you shall not drown. <coughs> when you walk through the fire, you should not be burned. Why? Because you are faithful to the Lord, and God is faithful to you. And I know Amen. I jumped around, walked around here. I hope everybody hears my voice on the video, and I hope you are blessed. Father God, I thank you for touching each and every one, every person here today. Do not be.